with Ruiz's surprise victory over Joshua and the clash of the sand dunes coming soon, Immersive asks, when is excess fat good for sporting performance? On the 1st of June at Madison Square Gardens, Anthony Joshua had his US debut, which was also the highest grossing pre-sale New York fight in history. This fight saw him lose to which many outside of the boxing fraternity viewed as an upset, as many on the media focused heavily on Ruiz's excess body fat as a reason for the upset. This clearly ignores that Ruiz Jr. has skills with inside the squared circle. Before I go on, I must prefix this by saying I am not a fighting expert or a pugilist. However, my knowledge base is in sports science. Although excess body fat is not ideal, as it is associated with negative health risks like diabetes, one thing that can be stated about excess fat in a boxing sense is that it can be beneficial in certain contexts to certain individual fighters. But generally, the more mass behind the punch if delivered at speed will likely increase the likelihood of causing damage from that punch. However, this is not for every fighter. But excess body fat can act as a shield. See, look, he's got muscles under there. Like, look at his stomach. He's just got some body fat on him. But here's one thing. If you do have great cardio, one thing that body fat can do is it can protect you somewhat. It's like wearing eight sweaters. And then if you hit him to the body and he barely reacts, you'd be like, F In most sports, excess body fat is not of benefit, especially as it acts as a dead weight an effect that the body has to overcome in order to move. For instance, in athletics, cycling and gymnastics, being lighter providing that it's not minimizing power or leading to muscle wastage is generally more beneficial. This can be best represented by Newton's second law, which is force times mass equals acceleration. So in other words, the heavier the object is, the more force is needed for that object to move. Whether fat gives an advantage relies on the tactics, psychology, as well as other nuanced factors within boxing. Fighters generally want to be as big as possible for their weight division, even if this means cutting down to make the class. For the most part, unless there is a perceived advantage to being lighter in a weight category, SNC coaches and nutritionists will try to get their fighter as heavy as they can with inside the weight category. Generally before a fight, it is best to condition the pugilist, especially to gain weight, to do so by gaining muscle size. However, one must take each fighter as an individual, and some individuals will have a different body composition than others, and an ability to gain mass needed, especially in a short space of time. The quickest way to gain mass is by generating residual fat. It must be stated that for boxers who constantly cut and gain weight could potentially lead to mental health issues such as eating disorders. This has been shown in male MMA fighters. Many fighters are said to detest cutting. However, many fighters do feel uncomfortable with excess weight, but this is more of a personal preference. If I'm honest, I hate every part of it. You know, it's not healthy um, and I definitely you know, I don't advise it to people, but it's kind of like you have to do it now. For me, you know, on, on fight week, I probably lose a stone. And then the idea is that, you know, when I go back into the fight, I put that stone back on. You know, as I say, it's not healthy. I'd never recommend it to anyone, but that's just what I do. And that's just how my, my nutritionist and we've kind of, we found the best way of making weight for me, but it's still not healthy. All of a sudden, the fight's over and tell yourself that you've got this month long window of opportunities to stuff your face and you start the next fight camp big and then got a yo-yo diet under eats which makes you crave more and it just it was a vicious cycle mixed martial arts is unique in that it allows athletes to utilize techniques from a number of combat sports and has existed with its current rule set since 2001. a culture has developed within the sport whereby athletes are cutting large amounts of body mass than has previously been documented in any other sport. In part, 
This is due to the long time frame, 24 hours plus, between weigh-ins and competitions. It is also thought to be best to be leaner and that excess body fat is potentially unnecessary or harmful for performance. Yet again, there are notable exceptions to the rule. Boxing is contested in both amateur and professional governing bodies, with differing rule sets regulating the two codes. In amateur boxing, athletes are required to weigh in on the day of each bout of the competition, no less than three hours prior. Whereas in professional boxing promotions, weigh-ins are held the day before. As such, the body mass loss practices of both amateur and professional boxers are desperate based upon the time scale given to recover prior to the competition. Research into body mass loss practices of professional boxers is extremely limited. However, recent research by Real 2017 highlighted that amateur boxers in the Australian National Championship reportedly losing 3.6 to 2.1% of body mass. Most of the short term weight loss techniques utilized in boxing are often through dehydration techniques. Having excess body fat can make you slower and there is also an impact on thermogenics, meaning that the athlete will have to create more energy in order to perform the same task. Those with excess body fat are often slower. However, in the heavyweight category, depending on the fighter, there is less emphasis on speed around the ring and sometimes more emphasis on powerful punching or knockout punching. Now this is going to be an incredibly oversimplified version of how we create energy, but it's, I must state this in order to explain why Ruiz is the way he is. There are two main energy systems. You have the anaerobic system, that quick energy burst, versus the aerobic system, which is a longer energy burst. The function of the energy systems is to produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is used to make our muscles contract and therefore allow us to take part in exercise. It's basically a protein, adenosine, with free phosphates attached to it. When chemical bonds are broken, energy is therefore released. So within our muscle fibres, we have these things called sarcomeres. And within the sarcomeres, or a series of sarcomeres, we have what is called the actin. Now these are like crocodile clips, and the meiosis, like the head in which the crocodile clip attaches to, pulls and twists. Now ATP covers up the myosin head, and it's only when ATP disappears from the myosin head does the actin then binds to the myosin with the help of the ATP. This then creates adenosine diphosphate, which is used to make the muscles contract. Now we have two anaerobic systems, the phosphocreatine system. This is the energy that we utilize explosively. Think of track cyclists, think of sprinters. And we also have the lactic acid system. And this is utilized after our phosphocreatine has run out. This is also no, otherwise known as anaerobic glycolysis. Now the aerobic energy system provides ATP at a slower rate than the previous two energy systems. It is responsible for producing the majority of our energy while our bodies are at rest or taking part in low intensity exercise, such as jogging. The most notable of these reactions is aerobic glycolysis, which occurs when oxygen is available to break down glucose. But you are never fully in one energy system. Think of it as a continuum. And in boxing, you are utilizing a multiple of these energy systems. There is a greater energy requirement to fulfill when carrying more mass, similar to carrying more muscle. Also, we must take into account the more, if you throw more power punches, if you're trying to get more movement, trying to be speedier, the quicker you are likely to tire. Ruiz had more fat for the New York fight. The predominant reason for that is he is maintaining caloric balance that keeps him at that size. Now, it must be highlighted that he is burning a lot more calories due to his training, but also eating a hell of a lot of calories also. Therefore, he's maintaining a balance. The old phrase, there is muscle under there, is true for him. But what's your opinion? Like, subscribe, comment below. Sports Science 
not bro sign. 